Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's summarize what we know about the catenary, what we've learned in the last several videos, and here the summary of all the equations that come out of that analysis of what a catenary is. First of all, a catenary again is the shape of a hanging cable, a cable that's hanging under its own weight. It will have a certain amount of sag, and the span will be the distance between the two points from which the cable is hung. Now notice that if we take half the cable and put it on the x-y axis with the bottom of the cable at the origin, we can make some relationship between the tension in the cable, the tension at the bottom of the cable, and the weight per unit length times the length of the cable, and we can relate those to one another for any section or any point on the cable. But then finally we realize that if we take that cable and we move it up, at least the function of the cable, we move it up so that the bottom of the cable is a distance C above the origin and we define C as the ratio of the tension at the bottom of the cable divided by the weight per unit length of the cable, we can now write the function or the equation of that hanging cable in terms of the hyperbolic functions, the hyperbolic sine and cosine. So bottom line is we found the relationship between y, the distance from the origin to any point on the cable, in terms of c times a hyperbolic cosine of x over c. We also define the length from the bottom of the cable to any point on the cable as being equal to c times a hyperbolic sine of x over c. Now let's take a look at some of the other equations that pop out from that. First of all, we should realize that y, the distance to any point on the cable, is simply the sum of the sag plus c. Now, of course, that is true if we're talking about this point right there. So only if we talk about y at b, we take the sag plus c together, that will be y when, when we talk about the point over here. So this is our point, let's call it at point b, and so to clarify that, we should say that y at b is equal to the sum of the sag plus c, which means that if we want to know how much the cable sags, we need to know how big y is at b minus c, minus the distance from the bottom of the cable to the origin. Next, the tension in the cable, anywhere along the cable, can simply be defined as the product of the weight per unit length times the distance from the origin to any point on the cable. We can also express that distance y as being equal to the square root of s squared plus c squared, and therefore if we solve this equation for c, we can express c in terms of the square root of y squared minus s squared. The reason why we want all those equations is because sometimes we're given certain things and not others, and those will then be the only ways in which we can find what we're looking for. Also, we realize that x is equal to c times the natural log of s plus the square root of s squared plus c squared over c, and then realizing, of course, that y is equal to this quantity right here, we can replace this by y, and so x can be written in terms of c times the natural log of s plus y over c. Now, of course, that is not the form of the hyperbolic functions, but sometimes that is necessary. And of course, we don't have an equation that we can use to solve for x in terms of the hyperbolic functions, so maybe this one can help us do that. Realizing that the span of the entire cable is simply twice the distance from here to the support, if we call that x, then we know that the span is twice x, and the length of the cable will be twice the distance s. Of course, again, when we take the entire distance from there to there, so maybe we should write s sub b, and here the span twice x sub b, again indicating we're talking about the entire distance from here to the point of support and from here to the point of support. Also realizing that the angle can be calculated at any point along the cable by simply taking the rise over the run, and the rise over the run can also be expressed as s over c. That's kind of an interesting part, is that even though the tangent of theta will be expressed in terms of dy dx anywhere along the cable, it can also be expressed in terms of the distance to that point on the cable S and the distance from the origin to the bottom of the cable. And so we can then take the arctangent of that quantity and remember also the relationship between C and the force at the bottom or the tension at the bottom of the cable divided by the weight per unit length. And then one more thing that's really important to realize, because if you don't, sometimes it really will throw you for a loop. The quantity C 
is not a real physical quantity. There's no physical real relationship for the number C. We know that we defined it as this, this ratio, but there's really no physical quantity for that. And sometimes C will be big, sometimes C will be small. C is only there, so this, this curve can be written in terms of the hyperbolic functions. That's the only reason we define C to make that possible, but there's no physical quantity, so don't let that get you confused. Just simply say it's a number I need so I can set up the hyperbolic functions. There's no real quantity assigned to the number C. It's just a tool for us to be able to come up with all these various equations. And these equations will allow us to solve any catenary problem, and I'll show you some examples of how to do that.